I'll do a synthesis just to complicate it a little bit more since you have even more flexibility. But again, general approach, if you watch the videos and you, um, the prerequisite video that I had linked, plus you just saw me do this, you have basically all you need to begin, right? I want to keep this very, very, very introductory. Um, you know, maybe even teenagers or like you know, middle school kids might be able to access this information. And these are the parts, right? So you just need to know what the parts are. And now we'll begin. So those are the parts. And now we're actually going to use that format, that inference, to begin the construction of an argument, which is the whole point of this video. All right, so if you turn, oh, as you guys know, click the link in the description field. It'll take you to the PDF. Obviously, I've recently updated the PDF. Make sure you have the most up-to-date uh, um, most up-to-date form of it, or version of it, I guess. And uh, follow along. So top of page two. So you can and should begin with the logic again, prior to even knowing what you'll be analyzing. So, to be explicit, you're in your professor's course. She says, I want you to write a paper. I want you, based on what I've discussed in um, throughout the semester, to write a paper on something pertaining to the content information that I discussed throughout the semester. And you know what she discussed throughout the semester. You know what the, the nature of the topic of the class is. But you don't have an idea of really specifically what you want to discuss in your paper that you have to turn in for a final or for a midterm. The idea is not to stress about content first. What you can do is you can go to the logic and select sort of how you want to logically formalize your argument. Now this is going to make a hell of a good paper, <laughs> obviously, right? But you can figure out how to logically formalize your argument with very, very basic concepts, right? I mean, modus ponens is not hard to figure out. If I jump, I will fall. I jump, therefore I fall, right? You can take that very simple logical rule of inference and complicate it profoundly, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So the point is, don't worry about content information so much yet. Make sure you sort of memorize these rules of logical inference so that when it comes time for you to be able to write a paper, you, prior to selecting content, have a few rules of inference in line and you say, okay, well, paragraph one and two, I'm going to use this. Paragraph three and four, I'm going to use this. Paragraph five, six, and seven, I'm going to use this formulation, and so on and so forth. Okay. It can serve as a guide for whatever argument you eventually choose. The more exposure you have to logic, the more complex your understanding of logic, and by implication, the more complex the guide for your arguments. Now, let's begin with our guide. So again, we're going to return to modus ponens, right? So let's put it in the corner here. And it says, if A happens, then B happens. If I jump, I will fall. I jump, therefore, I fall. Really, really simple. My, actually, my little girl, who's uh, 11, she can understand this. This is very simple, right? If I jump, I will fall. I jump, I fall. OK. Can we make that more complicated? Can I introduce this into academic writing, this very simplistic formulation? Absolutely. So let me give you. Uh, let me give you an example. So right beneath the, the image on page two, so from the prerequisite video, you were introduced to the basic, again, if you haven't watched that video, or if, I mean, if you already know this, um, you know, sort of the rules of inference, this series might be boring to you, but for those of you who don't, or for those of you who need a refresher, I think me going through this so gradually, was, it's gonna have you rock solid when it comes to your, your understanding, right? There won't be any there won't be any faking this. You'll know it, and you'll be effectively able to incorporate it. And then the more on your own time that you study and practice logic, you'll recognize that I can do complete logical deductions and just add words to it, right? And then it just gets fun. <laughs> so from the prerequisite video, you are introduced to the basic argument, argument form. The intuitive idea is to build on that basic form more complex appropriations of modus ponens. That's very key, that sentence is key, right? The intuitive idea is to build on the basic form, we're gonna build on this basic form, more complex um, appropriations of modus ponens. I think the word appropriations here, I probably should have put that in italics, right? I think the word appropriations here is very, very important. What we're doing is we're appropriating the logic to 
argument, to, the, to even the potential for argument, think of the cookie dough um, and the cookie cutter example. I always think about John Locke when I say that, but think about, and I don't want to confuse people with that, but think about the fact that the cookie cutter frames the dough. You have the, the cookie dough, you lay it out flat, you take the cookie dough cutter and you impress it upon the cookie dough, and obviously the cookie dough conforms to the nature of the cutter. It's exactly the same. You take logic and you, conf you, you impress it, you appropriate logic to social science facts of the matter, or things that you're investigating in social sciences, and what you do is you conform your argument, the nature of your argument, to, to frame, to be framed by the boundaries of the logic. So that's what we're doing, right? We're taking the boundaries of this logic, this rule of inference, modus ponens, and we're going to appropriate this rule of inference to something that I want to discuss or describe. Right? So our argument has to stay within bounds of this, this construction. If then the antecedent happens, the consequence happens. That's the basic nature. We have to preserve the form itself. So we begin with the logic and then we begin with the logic and then construct the argument after we've selected um, the rule of inference. I will build on each of I will be I will build on each of the examples. The trick is to add content information data without compromising the logical form. Right? So we're just going to add and we're going to add content information and data to make the arguments increasingly more complex. But we begin very very basic. If you jump, you will fall. You jump, you fall. And by the end, especially on this section, we'll be talking about. Uh, we were talking about <laughs> the water table and, and all this other random, random crap. <laughs> so it's not random at all. It's been very strategically designed. But uh, again, we're almost 20 minutes in. Uh, a lot of sort of preface to give you set the tone of what to expect. So example number one. Example number one. Okay. So let's look at example number one. Number one says, again, and for all you logic buffs out there, um, you, you guys know what I'm capable of doing in terms of logic. The idea isn't to be absolutely flawlessly rigorous. The idea is that this is intuitive. And in so far as it is intuitive, I want to demonstrate how it's done so that you have an understanding of how it's done and you should feel comfortable to be flexible in this. I'm not one of those type of educators that it has to be this way or, or not, and this is not conforming and both. No, get the general idea of what I'm gonna say. See how I um, appropriate the rule of inference to condition my argument, and then if you feel that it's right, why didn't that matter, right? This helps me tremendously. This helps me tremendously, and I use this in almost everything that I write. I don't write it down anymore because I have the rules in my head, but you know, you, this is this is day one, right? This, we're just beginning. So I'm actually going to write this out, right? So if, which is underlined, if you water, if you water your grass, if you water your grass during a drought. Okay. So this part satisfies A, and this is the, your antecedent. C E D E N T. Okay, so I want to stop there. If you water your grass during a drought, this first um, portion of my sentence satisfies the position, the position of your antecedent A. So, again, modus ponens says, if A happens, then B happens. So since I recognize that the way in which it's said is if, then, if, then, then I recognize that I can basically use anything. If anything happens, then anything happens, right? If is my antecedent. So then I say, okay, well, I want to start an argument, and I'm going to appropriate this rule of inference, modus ponens, to structure the way in which I formalize my argument, and I recognize that my antecedent begins with if, I say if, for example, you water your grass during a drought, that satisfies the condition of my antecedent. The next, um, the next bit then, um, 